Okay, uh, we're here with former county councilor Michael Wismer. Uh, thank you for being with us, Mike. Sir Carol, it's always a pleasure to be here with the LA Post. And uh, so this is different than the last time you were with us because you were running. And um, so how does it feel to kind of be an observer, if you will? Um, I thought it's uh, actually more fun to be on this side because I can come in here and I can watch my friend David Israelovitz squirm and pretend like it's not important, that he's just waiting for the results. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he's trying to be calm and cool in the back of his mind. He's like, where are the results? Where are they? I want to know. I want to know what the numbers are. So I like watching it. It's long sweat. And then my other friend that we had on council was Rick Reese and he's pacing up and down pretending like he's trying to be cool too. So it's fun to watch. You can yes. sit back and um, uh, watch them go through a little bit of anxiety. And the, the interesting thing about this race, it's about quarter till eight. We're 45 minutes into when the poll should have closed. However, in the White Rock fire station, there's still long lines and they will not close down that poll until the last person in line uh, at 7 o'clock gets a chance to vote. Even if it goes to 8, 8.30, whatever it takes, same at the golf course in Los Alamos. Right, and uh, you know, the, uh, there's a pretty good turnout. There's over 8,000 that have uh, voted. So for a non-presidential election, that's, that's really a pretty good turnout for Los Angeles. But of course, Los Angeles always turns out pretty well. And, uh, you know, there's always pizza places open, too, for people that are waiting in line. They can stop by and get a pizza. And that's wait. Or you can come up here and, and watch some of these candidates uh, walk around here and pretend like they're cool. <laughs> and they're not, and they're, not, uh, they're not feeling the pressure. No, but election day is a big deal. You work hard for your camp on your campaign for a number of months. It really heats up in you know, the August, September time frame. And, it, and then, you know, you coast through autumn and fall, and you have to miss football. And, uh, you know, every Saturday you're out there campaigning when you could be watching Notre Dame or Alabama. I'd rather watch a football game. <laughs> That's what I enjoy this year. So then it, it comes to down to this. It comes down to this day. And, and, uh, we hope that uh, the best candidates win. There's, for county council, of course, there's there's only four open seats. There's eight candidates, four Republican and four uh, Democrats. So uh, there's two which you could call incumbents, except that they were both actually appointed to mm -hmm. fill vacancies. Uh, so this is their first, you know, real election. Um, if they're re-elected, then there's only two seats. And so it's going to be interesting to see who, who comes out because it's quite a field of, of different kinds of people. Do you want me to make a prediction? Yes. I predict after tonight the election will be over. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and it's, uh, it's just an anomaly that uh, there were two vacancies on the council in the past six years, and uh, we had some very good candidates, and we picked some, some good counselors uh, that, are, that are served well, and we'll see, we'll see if they get elected, and they, they can take off their diapers. <laughs> have to go on through an election, they, they yeah, get their that's right. That's right. So, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. I'll be watching to see how it turns out. And then there's, you know, the ballot questions on the... Charter. Yeah, the Charter Review, which we started in 2009. Yeah. I'm glad to see that over. We can all pretend like that's over pretty soon, too. Yes. And you know what I'm really going to miss is the public calls. Oh, my. I bet you are. That's been really something. This year, it seemed to be an awful lot of the real slick, uh, I don't know what you call them, but um, they would come in the mail, mm -hmm. and they looked very expensive. Uh, and they were just full of very negative uh, comments about one candidate or another and and the candidates don't actually even know about it it's PACs that just do this yeah you know the Supreme Court ruling in Citizen versus United about uh, unlimited uh, amount of money to flow into PACs so uh, it'd be interesting to analyze what the impact of that has on elections and whether people really are susceptible to that kind of campaign you know luckily in Los Alamos at the local level at least at the council is pretty simple people are professional officers in Los Alamos generally speaking 
So you really never get bad candidates. So, uh, once you get past the local level, it gets, it gets, um, politics is getting to be uh, pretty ugly. And we'll see on a national level, too, what happens if there's any, uh, what voter angst is out there. So, yeah, well, interesting year, even though it's a non-presidential. Yeah. See, and the fact that everything is delayed gives you a chance to get me back on here. So. Yes, that's right. Yes, because the, the results still aren't in. The, the lines continue at the White Rock Fire Station and the golf course. So, uh, But they've been talking on the national level that this was going to be very low turnout across the country. And so it's good to see uh, our county clerk, Sharon Stover, announced a few moments ago that there's been over 3,000 votes cast just today so far. Yeah, and I think uh, you have to tip your hat to Sharon because uh, I think she's done a good job of getting the word out of where about, when the vote uh, is all about, uh, where the, the polling stations are, what time they're open. She's been putting advertisements out there to encourage people to vote, and I think that's good. I think that includes it. Encourage people to exercise their right to vote. And she's done. A, she's done a pretty good job. You can't drive anywhere around here without seeing one of her signs. Yeah. Well, maybe we shouldn't go. <laughs> but, but at least she. Uh, I would say she's done a good job. Putting public information out there about. Her. Yeah. And I think she was out in front of the firehouse in White Rock. Like people are giving out the answers. She's got a passion for the truth. I know she was out today. Uh, it, here in, we're in the municipal building, and she was here giving out bottled, bottles of water. So, um, yeah. you know, she was really taking care. So, okay, Mike. Well, thanks for being with us, and and uh, we'll talk to you again before the night's out. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. I, I got to go give Jeff Rogers a hard time now. So that okay. <laughs> okay.